This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech, I'm talking about civil engineering 3303 solids. Do a little brief thing on three dimensional combined loadings. I use in a problem from the Hibbler book 853. This is bent uh, rod or sticking out of the wall, and you it's got three loads on it, as shown here. And uh, the, you want to know the stresses at this section right here, where there's a the the axes of the coordinate axes are shown. Okay, you got these three forces: 75 pounds, 80 pounds, and 100 pounds. And <clears throat> I'm just using the <clears throat> axis system that he's got. <clears throat> and um, here's the dimensions of the loads and everything. And so uh, I've cut a section, I've blown this area up bigger so I can show my reactions. This is really just a statics problem to determine these internal forces. Um, I want to generally assume my reactions, and this is kind of looking at the back side of this um, rod, this bent rod, but I want to assume my reactions in the positive directions of each one of these forces and the moments. So at any point, you know, I've got three forces and three uh, moments. Uh, so I assume a positive Rx and a positive Ry and a positive Rz. And I assume a positive moment about the x-axis. These are internal force reactions positive moment about the y-axis and positive moment about the z-axis. I'm really looking, like I say, looking at the back side of that rod. And so I use the right-hand rule to determine the direction of positive moments and so forth. Standard way we've learned in statics and talked about in this class. Okay, then I'm just continuing on with a statics problem. I want to do sum of forces in the x-direction. That's equal to zero. The only thing I have is my Rx reaction, and the force that's in the x direction is a 75 pound force, so Rx is equal to 75 pounds, and got to look at it, I've assumed Rx positive away from that cut surface, so it's in tension. You can see that that's in tension, I hope. Um, some of the forces in the Y, similar, you got the Ry reaction, as I've called it here and the 80 pounds down, resisting it. So RY is 80 pounds, and that is a transverse shear in the Y direction, the normal direction that we're used to looking at it on beams and things. Then I look at the sum of forces in the Z direction. The only Z force I have is this 100 pound force. And I've assumed my positive RX, RZ reaction, so RZ is 100 pounds negative. My internal reaction is that way on the back side of that face that cut section. So that's a transverse shear in the Z direction, which is kind of 90 degrees from where we're used to looking at it in bending, or in beams and bending. Continuing on, I look at my sum of my moments in the X direction. That's equal to zero. Well, the only thing that causes um, bending about the X axis, which is that longitudinal axis as it passes through that point there, is this 80 pound force and that's creating a really a torsion because the uh, the z x force is parallel to the x axis so it creates no moment the 100 pound force in the z direction passes through or intersects the x axis so it creates no moment so the only thing I've got is a 80 pounds times that 3 inch moment arm so the the moment in the x direction reaction which is really a torsion is 240 inch pounds 80 times 3 um, continuing on, looking at the sum of the moments about the y-axis through that point. Sum of the moments y is my, my internal force, minus, I have two things that cause, two of these forces cause moment about the y-axis. Of course, the y-force, the 80 pounds, doesn't because it's parallel to the y-axis. But the 75 pounds is going this way, trying to rotate that way, about the y-axis times 3 inches. 
75 times 3, and that's a negative rotation, negative moment, using the right-hand rule, plus the 100 pounds in the z-direction times its moment arm of 8 inches. So those counteract each other a little bit. The sum, algebraic sum of those is 575 inch-pounds. That's bending moment about the y-axis. It's trying to bend that rod this direction. Finally, I've got some moments about the z-axis, uh, which is this axis here. The z-force doesn't create any moment because it's parallel. The 75-pound force doesn't create any moment because it intersects it. The only thing I've got is this 80-pound force times 8-inch distance, shortest perpendicular distance. So the moment is, the one about the z-axis is 640 inch-pounds, 80 times 8. That's bending moment about the z-axis, which is the normal horizontal axis that we look at for bending. So I've put all those on this section, and now I'm kind of looking at the section of the, the cut face that uh, look, I'm looking at. and Because I'm trying to determine, it's key whether I determine what the directions of the shears are and then what the directions especially of the bending moments are, compression or tension. So looking at MX, or looking at RX, it is an axial force uh, coming out of the page at me. So it's really tension, 75 pounds, so stress is just 75 divided by that area of whatever the area of that rod is. My shears are VY, I've converted RY to VY, and it's 80 pounds down on that face I'm looking at. And it's 100 pounds horizontal shear about, uh, in the, I've converted RZ to VZ. And just look real quick to evaluate those shears. Does the shear, and so if I want the shear at a point here caused by this VY of 80 pounds, it's zero because that's the extreme fiber, and then the, the Q of that is zero. If I want to know the shear about the shear stress at a point there, I've got the biggest Q I can get, the whole half circle, and the thickness is going to be that diameter. So I evaluate that in the normal manner. Similarly, uh, but a little bit different because we're it's horizontal shear. Now I've got maximum shear here at point the point here on the top because the, the Q is this big area of this half circle on the right side. And the shear stress due to this, the transverse shear stress, VQ over IT, is zero at this point right here because the Q is zero. Anyway, that's how you evaluate that stuff. Then look at the, uh, the moments. I've got the 240 inch-pound torsion, so I evaluate the shear stress due to that. So it's shear stress that direction there, the, here to the left on the bottom, down on the right, up on the left. And that's that T rho over J torsional shear stress. So I evaluate that. And then I've got biaxial bending. I've got bending moment about both axes. And so here I've looked at MY, 575 inch-pounds, and looking at what it's doing, it's putting compression on this side of the y-axis and tension on this side of the y-axis. And it's caused by, the majority of it's caused by this 100-pound force this direction, trying to rotate this way. So it's putting compression, I hope you can see, on the right side and tension on the left side. Finally, looking at the moment about the z-axis, all caused by this 80 pounds, so it's down, it's like a negative bending moment, it's causing compression on the bottom and tension on the top. I'm going to evaluate that with MY over I, especially in regards to tension or compression. Hope that helps.